the Lord. Hey, Amen. It's so good to be in church. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad to step out of that world for just a little bit and come into the house of God. <coughs> Man, I appreciate God so much. I appreciate his ways so much. And uh, it's just such a privilege to serve him and to be in this place. Amen. Y'all you know, going to put up with me tonight. Brother Gary got his gallbladder out earlier today. He was doing good. And uh, but uh, he said he probably wouldn't make it. So. <laughs> I told him not to worry about a thing. Amen. The good Lord will take care of us. We'll be just fine. Hallelujah. Amen. We do want to go to the Lord in prayer. And I am so thankful that we can turn to him. He is our source. Can somebody say amen? He is our source. Please remember my daughter. Hold her up in your prayers if you would. And, uh, we haven't heard from her, but I just pray God will touch her and guide her. Um, my boss at work, uh, Eric Baker, he uh, he resigned, and uh, he has gone to another location. So uh, pray for him. That that will be a great move for him. And then pray for us as we uh, as we uh, experience the results of that. <laughs> Amen. And uh, I guess pray for Caliber that uh, they'll have some answers and use wisdom in what they're doing here and only God knows what the outcome will be but uh, I do not believe that uh, that was what was best for the company but uh, I don't have to worry about that because it's not my company <laughs> I just had the privilege of working there amen so let's pray for them pray for everybody that works there because half the guys the only reason they worked there was because Gary was there so uh, the plot thickens rather quickly Amen. But the good Lord's the one in charge. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Uh, let's hold Sister Anne up in prayer. She's on with us tonight. Let's pray for her. God bless her and encourage her. Let's pray for Sister Patricia Brown. She calls from time to time, and she needs a touch from the Lord. And so let's pray for her that God will bless and direct her in her journey. And many others like them that are in the need of prayer. Praise God. Uh, I know you've got some needs we want to open up to you tonight. Your needs to the Lord. Amen.
the concern is if it grows, it could cause her to lose her hearing, her speech, and ability to swallow. Um, but it's been just staying the same size. So continued prayers for her. And Judy's sister Jan is going through a third round of cancer and really needs the Lord's touch. Um, we'd like prayer for um, Lisa and Will, a couple that we met last week. Or, well, we met. Lisa um, had a good, I had a real good talk with her a couple times, and um, she's going to be inviting them out to church. So pray that Amen. see them. And, um, let's remember Sister Gwen and Jimmy Weatherly and Brother Jimmy. He's been having a lot of car problems. Let's pray for him. Um, let's uh, keep Sister Jenny heart in prayer that God will just. Complete the healing in her. She's been battling some respiratory issues for a while now, so pray for her and Brother Randy. Um, also remember her sister in prayer. Um, she had had surgery, had bone cancer, and had surgery. So pray that all goes well with the doctor because she continues to touch her. Um, let's remember Jamie Beth Smith and her children.
for God to <laughs> have somebody to meet you there. And hey, we're going to pray for you now. And no matter the odds, Amen. the only part that's not bad at the end, the winds are just two preachers. Um, but uh, everything came down, and um, I'm just thankful. God is, you know, there's my body's been doing haywire things, but it has not caused damage that you know has prevented me from doing anything and I'm so thankful because I know it could be so much worse um, I'm just just very grateful and yes, the lives that we pray for and I don't want to ever forget to give God praise for what he's done you know there's there's so much that we can be thankful for even in the middle of storms you know we can look back through life and see right. point after point when God has kept his hand of protection upon us Yes, provided amen. for us. I was sharing with uh, my friend Judy. She called yesterday to check on me. Just we were talking about tough times, and you know, I can remember all through the years when there was a big financial need and didn't see no way possible, and God always came through. You know, we always had food on our table. Um, it may not have been steaks, <laughs> but we didn't go hungry. You know, God, God provided. Amen. And I'm thankful we can hold on to his word that when it says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory, whatever that need may be, God will supply, and I'm thankful for that. I just, just have a heart of thankfulness tonight because God has been so good. Amen. And I uh, just want to thank him. Yes, amen. Praise God. Any others? Brother Barry? Uh, I'd just like to have a prayer for Lady Palmer. She had received a prostate lesion for her electric wheelchair and they were healed from over there. Takes a while, yes, amen. Yeah, amen. And uh, she's trying to push the hill faster. Amen. And uh, old Kelly Howard came here before you remember her. Oh, she, she's got two hernias that they need to take out her. All right, unspoken request, just raise your hand. God knows, hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet, let's go to the Lord in prayer. If you need prayer, we'd be glad to anoint you and pray for you tonight. Lord, we are in a wonderful place, and we are so thankful that you have given us this house to worship you, and that we have gathered in your name, and we thank you for your presence. God, we rejoice in your mercies and the glory of the Lord that is present to heal. There's always such a great comfort when we come into the house of God. Lord, as we cast our cares on you, you care about us, you care about our loved ones, those that we pray for. We pray for this world around us. They are rocking and reeling. Lord, they are so mixed up. There's so much chaos, God. But Lord, you're still the same God. You sit on the same throne, and you still love your people, Jesus. We pray, Lord, for revival, a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for your hand of provision in the lives of your people. We pray for Brother Thomas tonight, God, that you will bless him on his journey and guide him, Lord. We pray for your will and your wisdom, Jesus. We thank you for your keeping power, God, as we submit ourselves to you. For we have come to give you all the glory and all the praise because we know that you are worthy. And the church said in Jesus' name, Amen. Let's clap our hands and thank you for answering these requests. He's so faithful and good to do that. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. I'm so thankful for all the prayers that God has answered and obviously all the prayers he's going to answer because he's not done yet. Amen. He's not done yet. And I am so thankful for that. Praise God. Uh, let's see. I guess I haven't done this in a while, so I guess we've got some announcements. Usually have brother, brother, we'll have you go ahead and get the uh, offering if you would, brother James. And we'll take care of the announcements. Give you an opportunity to give. Lord, we are blessed and thankful for this opportunity. We pray for the gift of the giver, Lord, that you'll bless each in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is a great day to know the Lord. As we near the return of the Lord, we know he's coming back for a people that have made themselves ready. And uh, we have a world around us that is, they are, they are falling apart, bless
bless their hearts. Amen. There's so much confusion. The enemy is getting very bold. We're seeing and hearing things that we would have never heard 20, 30 years ago. And, uh, and so we just have to lean on the Lord and let God direct. Amen. All right. We have some announcements. Uh, prayer focus. Gwen and Danny Bowling. So thankful for them. Let's hold them up in prayer this week. Birthdays, anniversaries. Tom Easter Jr. celebrated a big birthday. Amen. Had a good time. Sister Joanne, yours is a coming. Amen. Hold on. <laughs> We're so thankful for these. Also, got our Compass Prayer Churches North, South, East, and West. Thankful for them and the work that God is doing through them. And so glad to be a part of the body of Christ. Also, have uh, Ladies Life scheduled Thursdays, 9 a.m. Sister Joanne's house. So that's going to be a great time tomorrow, Lord willing. Men's Fellowship Breakfast. Guys, we're going to get together June 18th at Whataburger at 8.30. So if you want a free breakfast, you want to bring somebody out and, and introduce them to us, uh, give them a chance to uh, meet some of us from the church. It's a great chance. And uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take care of breakfast for them. So mark that down, June 18th, that's going to be a couple of weeks away, and 8.30 at Whataburger, we'll get together and just have a good time of fellowship. Ladies was going to do it, but I just don't put ladies through it. <laughs> Amen. And uh, we love, we, we would love their cooking far better, but uh, my bride's been through a lot, and there's just we been a lot We'll do it at some point. <laughs> yeah, we'll, there's, there's going to be time for that, Lord willing, down the way. So, but we got that to look forward to. Amen. Uh, anything else? It should do us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we can worship the Lord and just, uh, this is your chance to just get into the presence of the Lord and enjoy this time in His house. Hallelujah. God is good.
big God. Amen. I love the truth that God has given to his servants. I love the truth that is available to us through his word. I love to study the word. Amen. Because truth never gets old. Truth never fades away. Truth never changes. Amen. And our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. These teachings, even though they've been around for thousands of years, because they are truth, they are still relevant today. They're still important today. Amen. Even though many in our world may discount and not pay attention, that does not take away from their importance or their relevance. Amen. Because truth never changes. Praise God. And I am so thankful that we serve a God that never changes. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. I am so thankful for that. We have been studying in the book of Proverbs. I love studying in Proverbs. And I am so thankful for what the Word of God shares with us as we are able to learn and glean from God's Word. We had finished up last week in chapter 4. And we had... Uh, we had finished with verse 23, and I think it would be good just to read that in opening, amen, this week as we go into the book of Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. This one verse is so power-packed, has so much meat for us, so much for us to grow on, and Proverbs writes and says in Proverbs 4 and 23, to keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Whatever you put into your heart is going to come out. Whatever you allow into your heart is going to come out. Now, I will say, thank the Lord, because I was not raised in the church. There was much put in my heart, and I had no control over that. Amen. And so there were many things. Thoughts, many feelings. Of course, the heart is carnal. Uh, the spirit in us is carnal. And so it tends to go against God naturally. But if we will keep our heart, if we will control, monitor what comes into our heart, then out of our heart, we will make our biggest decisions in life. Amen. And you're going to have to make some decisions in life whether you like it or not. Sorry. That's just life. It is. And you want to make good decisions. You want to make good choices. And, uh, and the Word of God teaches us how to monitor what goes into our hearts. Philippians 4 and 13, I think you go to read that. And it tells us that what sort of things are pure and just and holy, virtuous. If there's any virtue, if there's any praise, it said, think on these things, good things. We should allow good things into our heart. We should not entertain evil. Yet we have an in, insatiable desire to understand things. So we want to see the bloody, the gory, the messed up. The, we want to hear the stories of how this and how that. And, but if they're not good, amen, we don't need that. And I told my son this tonight. There's some things in life that you don't want to know about. Amen. There's some knowledge that we don't want to know. And yes, it's out there. Yes, you can get access to it, especially now, more than ever before. But it's not going to make you a better person. It's going to mess with your mind. There are a lot of alternate ideas out there that go against the Word of God. And if you fill your mind with those, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Yes, amen. Amen. The world is full of ideas, but God is not an idea. Amen. God is the creator of this world and this universe, Amen. and he gives us direction. And the word tells us here that we need to guard our heart. Verse 24, he says, put away from thee a froward mouth. Froward, that's that word again. Somebody who's obstinate, somebody who is... Uh, who is abrasive, someone who is rebellious. Uh, they are froward. He says, put away from you a froward mouth, perverse lips, put them far from you. Remember what the scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, yes. blurp, the mouth speaks. Yes. 
if we allow our heart to think hateful, ugly, vile thoughts, sooner or later, out of our mouth are going to come those very same thoughts. And you're going to say, well, where did that come from? It came from your heart because you've allowed yourself to think on those things and to dwell on those things. In verse 25, he goes to the eyes. He says, let your eyes look right on. Let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Job said it this way. He said he put blinders on. And uh, you have to go back a few years to make the blinders relevant. But for horse teams, when they were plowing fields and, uh, and pulling heavy loads, they would put blinders or shields on the sides of their eyes and they couldn't see what was going on out here. All they could see was the path before them, so they were not, one, distracted by commotions going on to the side, and they were not made fearful by things going on to the side of them. And Job said that he put blinders on so that he could look right at the Lord, so that he could look on the right path. And we need to watch where we look the things that we see, the little uh, Sunday school song, Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Yes, oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Because whatever comes into our heart, it's going to find residence there. It's going to rest there. And you'll have to probably deal with it the rest of your life. Now, thank God he can free us from that. He can either, one, erase those thoughts, or he can put them in a place of no relevance where they don't bother us. There are many people right now in our world that are very troubled in their minds. Yes. And it's because of the things that have gone into their hearts. Things they have seen, things they have heard, and as a result, they are very paranoid about the world that we live in. The world has always been full of trouble. That's never going to change. So that's nothing new. The challenge is, is how we process it. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with being cautious, careful. But if you live your life in fear of the unknown, fear, the acronym for fear, F-E-A-R, is future events appearing real. Key word there is they appear to be real. Yeah, but they're not. And so you live your life in fear about things that are not happening. But they might. And so, therefore, it can get to the point where you won't leave your house. You won't get in your car. You won't go to a place where there's a group of people because of fear. Amen. And so, we need to be careful what we allow into our eyes. Verse 26, he says, Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. So, study the heart. Be careful what you stick into your heart. Obviously, the eyes are a way to fill the heart, and so we have to be careful what we consume. Amen. The ideas, the thoughts, and the things that go into us, and watch where you go. There are paths that we should not travel down in life, and he will get into this in a little bit and give us some guidelines and warnings. Verse 27, he says, Turn not to the right hand nor to the left, Remove thy foot from evil. We should be walking the path that God has established for us. Now, in the book of Matthew, I believe it is, he talks about the straight and narrow. Amen. Why does he say straight and narrow? Well, that word straight actually means that it's, it's a narrow path with obstacles. And so it's not just that it's a narrow path, but it has obstacles. And so we need to keep our eyes focused on the path. We need to go where God wants us to go. There are going to be job opportunities that would take us down a bad path. And we need to recognize that and realize I can't take this job because I can't do that. I can't be a part of that. Amen. It's a temptation. There are paths that friends will try to invite you down. Oh, we're going to have a party and you need to come out. There's going to be a lot of drinking. We're going to have so much fun and that's a path that you don't need to go down. That's not the narrow path that Jesus is on. Amen. And if you're not careful, it can throw you off and destroy you. Chapter 5, verse 1, he says, My son, 
Attend unto my wisdom. Bow thine ear to mine understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. Holding on to the truth. You'd think that'd be easy. <laughs> but we are constantly bombarded every day with alternate ideas, alternate thoughts, alternate lifestyles, alternate means, uh, things that at one time were taboo or no-no. Now they're trying to say, oh, but that's okay. That's good. Oh, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Amen. We have to be very careful and understand Remember we started out Proverbs with the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. When we find out that we need God in our knowledge, then we need to find out what God wants us to do and become. And when we become what God wants us, then we will walk down the path he has chosen for us. And we're not going to be destroyed by all of the alternate options that are out there. And how did Satan destroy Adam and Eve in the garden? He gave them another path, another option. They were fine. They had it made. They were in the Garden of Eden. They had all the food. They had everything they wanted. No predators. It was a beautiful, lovely place. And then Satan pops up and says, Have you considered? <laughs> Amen. And lo and behold, he makes a threat. Oh, well, you can't eat of all the trees in the garden. And she says, no, we can eat of all the trees in the garden, but one. They knew the path. God had showed them the path. But then Satan says, oh, hath God said you'll die if you eat of that? Oh, you won't die. You're going to be like God. You're going to have the knowledge of good and evil. There's that understanding thing. We like to understand. Oh, really? Really? Wow, I wonder what evil is like. I wonder what I wonder I wonder. Amen. And lo and behold, they took off on a path they were not supposed to travel on. And it excluded God's wisdom and God's word. And this is what the writer is talking about here. Verse 3. He said, the lips of a strange woman, strange woman, strange woman, drop as honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. The woman of ill repute, the way that she gets her customers is through deceit. She flatters them. She flaunts her physical attributes she makes herself available in ways that she should not and the writer here says that her path it leads to destruction amen and is enamored or as much as men are drawn to that they need to consider that because that is not the path they want to travel down and he says lest thou shouldest ponder verse 6 the path of life her ways are movable thou canst not know them she will be whatever you want her to be. And you will never understand what she really is. Verse 7, hear me now. Therefore, O ye children, depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her. Come not nigh to the door of her house. Lest thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. Where are we at now? We're in the house of the Lord. The Lord is not a stranger. The Lord is good to us. God watches over us. God protects us. God directs our lives and blesses us as we honor him and serve him. But if you go chasing after sin, its path is always movable. It's always changing. It's never the same. You can never count on it. You can never depend on it. And it will deceive you every step of the way. And if you are trapped or tricked into following after that because, oh, I want that, you're going to find out you can't ever have it. Amen. It's elusive. It does not satisfy. And he says what will happen is your life will be wasted. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people in our world today that as they have grown older, 
They should be more mature. They should be wiser. But unfortunately, they continue to chase after these paths that take all their money, take all of their health, take all of their life. And when they're done with them, they have nothing to show for it. Their life is sucked dry. Their hope is destroyed. And they realize they have wasted their life because of the opportunities that have been put before them. And they took after them instead of the Lord. Verse 11, he says, thou, And that thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. And say, How have I hated instruction and my heart despised reproof? And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear unto them that instruct me. Wow. Amen. I don't want to live in my life that way. By turning away from God. And that's one thing about it. Once you've served the Lord and you know the Lord, you know the truth, you're going to always know it. Amen. You may find excuses to run from it. You may find excuses to ridicule or talk against it, but you're always going to know the truth. And so many that have gone into sin, when they have found their way back home again, they knew all along where home was. They knew where the path was. They knew where stability was at. They knew where hope was at. They knew where purpose was at. But when we leave God out of our equation and we try to satisfy the flesh, the eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the hear with hearing, or the tongue with speaking. Hear this preacher. It's impossible to satisfy your flesh. Doesn't matter how many women you chase after. Doesn't care how much alcohol you consume. Doesn't, it doesn't matter how much drugs you can do. You will never satisfy this flesh. This flesh will always be reaching for more, more, more. And what those things will do is destroy you. They will absolutely corrupt and destroy you. They will draw you away from God, away from the truth, and will cause you to chase after lies and deceptions, and your world will slowly crumble. And as the writer says here, when it's all said and done, verse 11, thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed and say, how have I hated instruction? My heart despise reproof and have not avoid the, obeyed the voice of my teachers nor inclined my ear unto them that instructed me. I was almost in it. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. And then he talks about drinking water out of your own cistern, running water out of your own well, let thy fountains be dispersed abroad, and rivers of water in the streets, let not thine own, let not them be only thine own and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed. Rejoice with the wife of thy youth. You need to keep your business at home. You need to be devoted to your family, to the church, to the work of God. You should not allow yourself to get caught up in this world around us and share what God intended for you to have with strangers and people who do not love God or live for God. And let's move on to verse 20. Let's, verse, let's go to verse 21. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord. He ponders all his goings. The Lord's watching you every step you take. The Lord's watching me every step I take. And I don't know about you, but to me, I find that very comforting. Amen. We... And, and I wish I could remember the scripture. It talks about the man, how that we devise, we have desires in our heart and we go in a certain direction and God directs our steps. Amen. And God knows just like you'd lead a, a horse with a carrot. Uh, he knows that there are times that we are led that way. Also, there are things we desire and God puts them before us, but he directs our steps and he keeps us. He watches over us and he protects us. And we need that desperately because our ways are before the Lord. He sees us. The interesting thing about this is, is that God sees our heart. And that's kind of scary because <laughs> we all know that our heart, there's some thoughts go through our head and our minds that are not good and we don't like them there. God understands that. But he knows when you stop and dwell on them, 
and let your imagination run wild. And he knows when you try to curb them and try to fill your mind and your heart with good thoughts. And that's what he's looking for. As the old preacher said, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head. But you can sure enough stop them from building a nest there. Yes. And so it is with the thoughts that come into our hearts, our minds, our lives. There are many things that fuel these thoughts. And you're not evil because that thought went into your mind or it was in your heart. You become evil when you begin to pursue that thought. When you begin to chase after that thought. God knows what we battle with. He knows the heart. And... Uh, the Bible tells us the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? God. God knows our heart. Amen. And so sometimes I pray, God protect me from my heart. From my own foolish desires. Amen. Because I can be deceived. You can be deceived. And so we need God to direct our steps. Young people, you need God to direct your steps. You don't understand, and this is what the writer started out here in chapter 5, verse 1. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. The reason he said that is because I've been down this road a little ways. And I have learned that I need God. I can't do this on my own. Amen. You need God directing your life. Yes, you need God included in your business. In other words, you need to invite Jesus into your heart, into your business, into your life. How do you do that? Once through repentance, being obedient to God's word, being baptized in Jesus' name, being filled with the Holy Ghost, being faithful to church, our tithing and our offerings that we give to God, they go to him. It blesses, God blesses us for that. Amen. And gives us more and provides for us. By doing all of these things, we are being directed in our path. Amen. That's why David said the footsteps of a good man, Psalms 1, are ordered by the Lord. Amen. I want my footsteps ordered. Because yes, it's not within man, the Bible tells us, to direct his own steps. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. If I'm not careful, I'll get all wrapped up in fear. Tomorrow, future events that appear real. When in reality... God's looking at my life and said, man, I'm going to bless you tomorrow. You have no idea how good it's going to be tomorrow. And I am all caught up in fear, thinking about something completely off the chart that's bothering me. Instead of dwelling on the Lord and letting God direct my yes. steps. Because the footsteps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. In Psalms 1, he also said that uh, he leads me beside the still water. I'm sorry, Psalms 23 talks about the sheep. He leadeth me beside the still water. He comforts us. He protects us. Amen. He shelters us. Yes. And we need that. Amen. Yes. We need that. Um, verse 22. This, his own iniquity shall take the wicked himself. He shall be holden with the cords of his sins. <coughs> Let me encourage someone tonight. There's a lot of people saying things and doing things that they shouldn't do. And some of these things will be done against you and I. Don't take it to heart. Give it to Jesus. Don't worry about it. God will judge them when the time comes. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I'll repay. I'll take care of it. He told us just love them and pray for them. Amen. Don't get all hung up on what they've done to you or what they've intended just pray for them, leave them in God's hands, and go on with your life. And you know what will happen? God will take care of it. There's going to be a great white throne judgment one day. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Hitler's going to be there. All of the horrible, terrible people that have ever lived are going to be there, along with the righteous, the saints of God. It's going to be an amazing time. That's what Matthew was talking about when Jesus spoke and said that the, the sheep and the goats are going to be gathered. The goats are going to be brought off to one side. The sheep are going to be put off to one side. The sheep are going to be gathered up to the Lord. And the goats are going to be cast into eternal darkness and suffering and torment. The great white throne judgment. We don't have to worry about that. God will take care of the wicked. And if somebody's wicked, then you need to pray for them. 
Because they need somebody praying for them that God will intervene and stop them, that he'll direct their paths so that they will turn from that path of wickedness. Amen. And hopefully you'll get to heaven and they'll be able to thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Instead of you and I going through life bitter, miserable, wanting to get revenge, hating their guts, all messed up because of what they did, when we should just leave it in God's hands and pray for them and let God deal with it. If they need judgment, let me tell you something. God can handle it. All right? And he will do a far better job than we could ever possibly do. So as the writer said here, his own iniquities, talking about the wicked, their sins, their own iniquities shall take the wicked himself. And he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. If they don't find a place of repentance, when they get to judgment, they're going to be bound and judged. And that's just the end of it. Amen. So we don't have to worry about that church. Verse 23. He shall die without instruction. And in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. Wow. There are so many in this world that have a great desire for money, fame, all kinds of things out there. But what we really need to chase after is the Lord. And then God will provide us with the things that we need and really truly want. Amen. Money will never bring you happiness. All right? Money seems like the answer to all things, but it doesn't bring happiness. If it did, the wealthiest people of the world would be the happiest people. And I got news for you. They are not. Amen. Because everybody in the world is trying to get their money. Isn't that just messed up? <laughs> and yet you and I think, oh, if I just had all that money. No, it would make you happy. As a matter of fact, it would make you so paranoid. It would make you so fearful. Then come the bodyguards. Then comes living in, the, in seclusion. Howard Hughes, when he died, I guess he was a recluse. No. He just, he was a fro, a pho, phobic about everything. Amen. And he had all this money. He didn't, he should have, he should have been the happiest person in the world. But lo and behold, money does not bring us happiness. And the things that we try to get and do to make our flesh happy. Amen. We have a younger generation that is playing games and they are getting into it. And they are thinking, ah. And you know what? The more games you play, the better it don't get. <laughs> you know, it just seems like it would, you know. And, and, and you get into it. And, and I played some games in the past, you know. I, I started playing them when they weren't hardly games. They've come a long way since I tried them. But I got addicted. And I was, man, I had to be there. And I had to go to the next level. And I had to do the next thing. And I had to, and I had to. And you know what? All it did was wear me out. Because no matter how many games you play, no matter how far you go, there's always going to be something else. And it's going to keep you at the edge of your stress and, and at the top of your game. Oh, yeah. You'll be at the top of your game. And when it's all said and done, what do you got to show for it? Your eyes are wore out. You're stressed out. You've got heart problems. <laughs> you're a mess. And what has it accomplished? Where, where, what are you going to do with that time now? That time's gone. Amen. There's an addiction that comes with that that is just nuts. That's not that it's evil. But if it takes too much of your time and it keeps you from the Lord, nah. That'll answer itself. Amen. The things of this life are fleeting, temporary. We have to be careful what we allow to consume our time. Because we can go through day after day after day and look back and have absolutely nothing to show for it. If you spend, say you spend several years building a house, a lot of work, a lot of labor, at the end of those years, you'll always be able to look back and say, I built that house. 
you'll have something to show for the time, the labor, the effort. If you uh, say you go to school and get education, you'll always have the credentials and you'll always be able to have that ability to go out and teach the knowledge that has been passed on to you. Your time is not wasted. But there are many things that people pursue today that leave them with absolutely nothing to show for what they have done. Try pursuing alcohol. It will rob you of everything you ever valued. Your family, your health, and your walk with God. And yet so many people are caught up in it. They cannot stop. Gambling is another one. They get started gambling and they keep, they just, they can't stop. And it may start out at the bingo parlor. It's simple enough. It's, it's, it's harmless. Amen. But that addiction that begins to grow, you spend so much time pursuing it and you're, you're, you're drawn on by the, the lure of maybe striking it rich. And at the end, thousands of dollars, who knows how much money is spent. And you look back and you can't say that, oh, I'm wealthy now because of that. No, you can say you're poor now because of that. You have nothing to show for it. <coughs> These are things in life we can pursue. And unfortunately, or fortunately, or whatever, gaming is that way. There's almost nothing to show for it. Money spent on the games, on the internet, on all the effort that's put into it. And lo and behold, when you look back on it, about all you can say is, yeah, I played that game. Amen. Right. Won't help you in your job. Won't help you in your family. Won't help you in your career, your education. It won't help anything. Maybe your reflexes. Maybe, maybe memory. I don't know. You know, there are some things that I'm sure that it probably helps, but there's a lot of things that it hurts. And that's the way the flesh is. The flesh gets drawn in. And so there's a lot of different things we can get drawn into. And uh, it's going to leave us empty. But you will not come out empty if you're serving the Lord, seeking the Lord's will. Because what happens there, God challenges us to build relationships. So then we take that time that we could have been drinking or drugging or, or whatever we're doing in life. We take that time and we invest in others and we develop relationships, friendships. Families draw closer. Our lives become enriched. I do things for my family instead of for me. And our family gets better. The church gets better. The people in our community get better. Our world gets better. When we try to invest in each other. But when we try to invest in ourselves and make, I'm going to make me happy. I don't care about nobody else. I'm going to make me happy. You are going to be the most miserable, lonely person that ever lived. And that's one of the reasons why many people consider suicide is because they cannot make themselves happy. Can't do it. If we seek to make God happy, what happens? He makes us happy. If we seek to make other people happy, guess what happens? They're going to seek to make us happy. And therein lies the key to joy and happiness. Requires no money doesn't require education just requires a heart that's loving and cares about others and we do what we can and then we begin to find out that we all have different talents so things I'm good at you're not but things you're good at I'm not and then we begin to and the world is an incredible place to live in people are beautiful God is awesome and we're on the right path <laughs> somebody say amen Let's thank you right now. Father, we thank you for the greatness of your name, for the power that you've made available to your people through the word of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we pray for your direction and guidance this week as we navigate through life and allow you to direct our steps, God, into the way that you want us to be so that we can enjoy what you have set us up for. Blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you all.